Uh, my name is Obakeng Murapedi Mathoko. Um, from a team called After Robot, and we're building uh, After Robot, which is an application that is targeted at the minibus taxi industry. In some ways, it's a, it's an Uber for the sort of private public transport system in South Africa. Describe to me the different stakeholders in the chain. Well, typically you'd have an owner, and the owner would buy the vehicle itself, and then that owner would hire what we call a driver, and then the driver would be the one driving around looking for people. And the owner would then, uh, then you have your commuter, the person who is actually needing the service itself. But the owner would subscribe to what we call an association. And that association has people like your queue marshals, who are the people at the taxi rank that help you to know where to go. And effectively the queue marshals are allocating the taxis to different routes and deciding when things are full and so on and so forth. So how does it work? You essentially, you've got a tablet, haven't you, for the queue marshal? Yes, we do. And how it would work is that we would allow the queue marshal themselves to be able to see the number plates of cars that are coming in and select those to build what we call a queue list. So that's the list of the cars that are in his queue and that he can then allocate the number of people and he can then just record however many people are in the car itself. And once that is, he can then dispatch the number of people and therefore record his workflow. And what stage is the is this um, company at? What, are you running a pilot or are you further along than that? Yes, we're a startup, um, so we're running a proof of concept at the moment with a taxi association in the south of Johannesburg and uh, called uh, JSSTA and we're working with them. So what we've done is we've um, released the Q Marshall app, so we've been running that for a few months with the Q Marshalls and then we're busy, we've actually launched with the drivers and there's about 80, 80 of them now that are running with the application itself and the marshals is about 70. And so the drivers essentially have a cab-based um, smartphone that sits on their dashboard? Yes, um, we'd like to make after robot aspirational. You know, I, 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 I understand that people are talking about feature phones, especially in this market, but no one aspires to get a feature phone for one. Um, two is that feature phone sales are on the app because there are low-end feature phones you know, especially the Android devices coming in at pretty reasonable prices. So, and we're starting to see that change even at the taxi rank itself. You see that uh, people have uh, decent phones on them. So when will you launch full scale? We're looking at about commercial launch full scale uh, 2017 Q1. So most of 2016, we'll be also just building and proofing the technology itself and getting more taxi associations on board. Um, we need to convince the taxi associations and the drivers to get on board and that takes time. And presumably thus far it's been self-funded, when will you start looking for finance? Um, we've actually been fortunate in that um, we actually secured funding from the Innovation Hub. Uh, we were incubated in the M Lab, and then from then on uh, we entered Ericsson's uh, global competition and we won our section for Technology for Most Good, which allowed us to then go through another process with them where we were evaluated among other companies, 10 other companies, and they ended up investing in us. So we have um, to be able to do this proof of concept. Yeah, it takes some cash and um, Ericsson was that, around to help us here. Yeah. However, that being said, of course, we want to expand and also to reduce the risk of one investor to, to this initiative. So we are actively looking for other investors um, in terms of expanding to other markets and growing as well.